Welcome back to Emoji Economics. My name is Odwadi Godwin. No, I promised that I was going to uh, I'm going to be talking about an American example of how to calculate equivalent national income. So here we are today. So example given C equals 100 plus 2.8 YD, tax equals minus 150 plus 2.25 Y, I which is investment, gross private domestic investment equals 60, and um, government spending equals 80. So A equals C plus I plus G. So from this question, you can see that this is a closed economy because there is no net export. So number one is uh, we should find the equilibrium national income, which is the equilibrium Y. Uh, B, show that government budget deficit is 5 billion. If you've not forgotten what government budget deficit is, that is simply where the um, budget balance is negative, when tax revenue minus government spending is negative. Uh, C, the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic has made the government to pursue an expansionary fiscal policy. Advise the government as the chief economic advisor on the choice of fiscal instrument to use to inject 200 billion naira into the economy. Wow, that's a good question. Then D, is there any difference in the impact on the economy from the choice of fiscal instruments available? Okay, cool. These are, these are very good questions. I must uh, tell you that uh, these are not the only questions where I sourced uh, this question from, but uh, let's just talk about these and, you know. Okay, so A is, um, so answer the first question, what, what is the equilibrium Y? A equals C plus F plus G. Recall that I mentioned in the previous slide that it's only as equilibrium that Y equals AE, that um, national income equals the aggregate expenditure, or that the potential real GDP equals the actual real GDP, or that even the, um, okay, I didn't add that one, aggregate supply equals aggregate demand. Anyway, Y equals C plus I plus G, since I've said Y equals AE, you know, we are at equilibrium now, so then you know, Y equals C plus I plus G, cool. So Y equals, uh, what you see from the question C is 100 plus 0.8 YD, 100 plus 0.8 YD, so this is uh, disposable, uh, natural disposable income. You know, this is not an individual consumption, it's talking about aggregate consumption, so uh, disposable national income. So investment is 60, uh, government spending is 80, so I sum this, this and this, 100 plus 60 is 160, plus 80 is 40, so we have 240 plus 0.8, then what is YD? So Y is simply Y minus tax. So y minus, but then the tax is in a function, uh, the, the tax has a function, so it's not just um, absolute. So the function is minus 150 plus 0.25 y, so y minus, open bracket, minus 150 plus 0.25 y, then you close the bracket. So we have two brackets now. Okay, so y minus, so please don't start, do that mistake. Uh, there is a minus here, so it's not y minus 150 plus, so it's y minus minus, so don't forget that. Okay, so y then equals 240 plus 0.8 minus times minus is plus 150 minus times plus is minus 0.5y. So we continue 240 plus 0.8, y minus 0.25y is equal to 0.75y and then plus 150. So y equals 240 plus this multiplied by this, we give us 0.6y. This multiplied by this, we give us plus 120. So y equals 360 plus 0.65 equals 240 plus 150 is 360. So if we collect an um, item, so y minus 0.6y comes to y equals 360. 0 0.4y is 360, then y is 900 billion naira. So our equilibrium national income is 900 billion naira from this particular question. So what then is um, the second question? Show that the government's budget deficit is 5 billion. Okay, cool. So budget balance is just tax revenue minus government spending. So if this is positive, that's uh, there's a budget surplus. If this is negative, there is a, a deficit. Uh, there is a budget deficit, and if this is just zero, the budget is balanced. So what we just have to prove here is if T minus G is negative. So uh, the tax function is minus 150 plus, we write it. But we have our Y now, so we just kind of, you know, replace Y with 900. So minus 150 plus 0 0.25, take it back at 900. So this time this is 2 to 5, then minus 150 plus 2 is 75. So tax is 75 billion there. So what then is our budget uh, balance? So Tax revenue, 75 minus 80, is going to be equal to minus 5. So because the budget balance is negative, so we have a budget deficit of 5 billion. So we've been able to prove that. Now the third question, which is you know a very fantastic question, I really like the question. The aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic has made the government to pursue an expansionary fiscal policy. Advise the government as the chief economic advisor on the choice of fiscal instruments to use to inject 200 billion into the economy. So this now, you know, 
this calls for a particular question in our mind. So what is the fiscal, what's fiscal policy? What are the fiscal instruments? Okay, fiscal policy is just the, you know, the policy that the government uses to stabilize the economy, to control or regulate the economy. And the government does that in two different ways, you know. It, it does that when it kind of alters its spending, that is government spending, you know, it, with respect to whatever objective that the government is pursuing in that economy at that given period of time. Then the other objective is um, using the tax, you know, it can change the tax component, it can change the amount of tax, you know, depending on the objective that it is pursuing in the economy, so depending on the economic objective. So the two uh, basic fiscal instruments are government spending and taxes. So what we just have to do here is, this question is, this question is trying to tell us that, I know this is an expansionary fiscal policy that the government tries to put money to the economy. So if the government tries to put money to the economy, so should government increase government spending by 200, uh, is it billion? Should government increase, yeah, by 200 billion naira, or should government cut taxes by 200 billion naira? So that's what the question is trying to tell us. Should government increase its spending by 200 billion naira, or should it cut its taxes by 200 billion naira? In order to attempt that question, so let us just look at an increase in government spending by 200 billion. So remember that the government spending was 80 billion era initially. So if the government wants to increase by 200, that gives us G2 plus 80 plus 200 plus 280 billion. So we resolve the whole thing, but right now we're using 280 instead of 80. Okay, so um, Y plus C plus that plus G, of course, Y plus 100 plus this plus 60, now plus 280. So 100 plus 60 is 160 plus 280 is 440. N plus 0 0.8 into the bracket, the tax uh, uh, y minus, we open the bracket, minus 150, plus 150 plus 0.25y, 0.25y. So we have 440 plus uh, 0 0.8 into the bracket, y minus, nine, minus is plus, plus 150, minus nine plus is minus 0.25y, okay, close the bracket. Now 440 plus 0.8, y minus 0.25y equals 0.75y, plus 150. 140 plus this times this is 0.6y, 0.8 times 150 is 120. So by the time we add this to this, we have 560 plus 0.6y. Okay, we've got that term, so y minus 0.6y equals 560, 0.4y equals 560. So we divide it by 0.4, we have, one, we have uh, this, is, this is trillions right now, 1.4 trillion, yeah, 1.4, but 1,400 billion naira. Now, what is the change in Y? Change in Y is to be 500 billion. And how is that the case? The initial Y was 900 billion. So now we have 1,400 billion. So 1,400 billion minus 900 billion will give us 500 billion. So if the government chooses to pursue an expansionary fiscal policy by increasing its spending, the equilibrium, equilibrium now, the equilibrium national income will change, or the equilibrium national disposable income will change by 500 billion. Now, let us check what's going to happen if the government said that, okay. Uh, if you, okay, as the chief economic advisor, uh, wants to advise the government and you want to look at the the impact of a reduction in, in tax by 200 billion, right, you know, so that you'll be able to know what to actually tell the government. So to do that, we have uh, the tax function as minus 150 plus 0 0.25 by the initial tax function. Now, what is going to be the new tax function? Because this is a reduction in taxes, so we are just going to subtract 200 from that function. Okay, so T2 equals uh, minus 150 plus what the initial uh, tax function, then minus 200. Cool. So minus 150 minus 200 is minus 350, then we start plus 0.25y. Okay, so instead of using the formal tax function now, so we're using the new tax function. So y equals 100 plus 0.8, open bracket, y minus, then the new tax function is minus 350 plus 0.25y, you close the bracket, then I don't know why am I leaving out a bracket. Then plus 60, that's the initial investment, plus 80, initial government spending. So you don't change this to 280, you don't uh, mix it up. Good. So why now? Because um, 100 plus 60 plus this is 240, 240 plus 0.8 into bracket. Y minus times minus is plus 350, minus times plus is minus 0.251. So we continue. So why now? I don't want to keep writing y, y, y. So equals 240 plus 0.8 into bracket y minus 0.25y, 0.75y, and then um, this is y plus 350. So 240 plus this times this is 0.6y, uh, 0.8 times, times 350 is 280. Now 240 plus 280 is 520 plus 0.6y. So we like times. Remember that it's y equals all of this. So y, this comes over to this side. Y, y minus 0.6y equals 520. Plus 520. So 0.4, 0.4y equals 520, 
and then when we divide through y equals to 1,300 billion. So in this case, the change in y is 400 billion naira. So which is what the question is actually asking you um, about. So what do you think you are going to recommend to the government of whatever country it is? Of course, it needs to be an increase in government spending. Although both of them are expansionary fiscal instruments, one has a better effect than the other. Why is that so? Why is that so? Okay, let me just jump to D. Is there any difference in the impact on the economy from the change of fiscal instrument available? Of course, yes. We can see that the government spending has a bigger effect than uh, the reduction in the uh, the reduction in, in, in taxes than the tax cuts. So why is that the case? That is simply because you know if the government should increase its spending, government is pushing out all of that money into the economy. For example, the government could increase its spending by constructing roads. You know. Is going to employ a lot of workers get employed. Government pushes all of that money into the economy, then people have income, then it multiplies here, 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 and there, and there, and all of that. But if we are talking about a reduction in taxes, a reduction in taxes will only increase the disposable income of people. And at the end of the day, people end up saving a part of that disposable income. So it is not all of that uh, reduction, all of that tax cost that is then put back into the economy. So that is why you know a tax cost is going to have a lesser effect than an increase in government spending in terms of expansionary fiscal measures. So that's uh, that's about that. I hope you've learned a lot from this video, or maybe a little. I hope you've learned something from this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Subscribe, share with your friends, and turn on notifications. So I'll be talking about you know, other things you know, still related to the Ikirimo um, National Income Accounting in subsequent videos. Now I was talking about slope. Yeah, slope of aggregate expenditure. How does it change equilibrium in income and all of that? Then from there we should be moving to the ISLM model. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.